You are now listening to the Fantasy Whisper Podcast with your hosts, Johnny, Game Time Hicks, and Big Travi. Wow, hello and welcome to the Fantasy Whispers Podcast. This is Face Off Friday. Travis, we're finally here, man. We're finally to Friday. I love Friday. T-G-I-F-O-F. Exactly. Thank God it's Face Off Friday, baby. Yeah, buddy. All right, today on Face Off Friday, we got we got a, ourselves a little treat for the people we're discussing Royce Freeman and Ronald Jones the second. These guys are going back to back uh, for the running back spot. Currently in drafts, we got at 5.04 and 5.06, according to the draft calculator. So, Travis, you want to kick it off because you got some interesting takes on your boy Ronald Jones. Bring it at me, baby. All right. So Doug Martin's gone now, Johnny. We know that. He went off and he signed with John Gruden over at with the Oakland Raiders, soon to be the Las Vegas Raiders. Uh, and Tampa Bay turned around with a 38th overall pick and selected Ronald Jones the second out of USC. Jones was a fantastic, speedy, and elusive back. He's got great vision. And if you look at the zone runs that he you know, both inside and outside zone runs last year, he tacked on 1,377 yards on those runs. That was the most in all of college football last year. And you come under a, a dirt cutter offense where he is running those same kind of zone plays. I just think with the draft capital that Tampa Bay has spent on Ronald Jones, the dearth of uh, talent around him and dearth, Johnny, that means lack of talent, just so you oh. know. Oh. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Uh, just be, because of that, I just think that, you know, there's not many people challenging him for this spot, the draft capital they use. I really like them to give John Ronald Jones the ball a lot. And, uh, I could see him really having success, especially early in the year. You have this, uh, Jameis Winston suspension. They are, they're likely to lean on the run to begin the year. And if he can really take off, which I think he has a real good shot at, uh, you could be paying off handsomely. Whereas I think the guy you're going to talk about with Royce Freeman, there's a lot of concerns with me on the offensive line, and uh, I'm not so sure Case Keenum is what you know a lot of people thought he was after last year. Wait, wait, you're saying? And that's why we took the damn field. Now, if you want to crown them, then crown their ass. <laughs> but they are who we thought they were, yep. and we let them off the hook. Exactly. I'm going to go off of Danny Green here and borrow a page in his book. Wait a second. Hold on. You, let me get this straight. You are saying that Ronald Jones doesn't have any competition, but are you forgetting about Peyton Barber last year at the end of the season when they finally gave up on Doug Martin and they said, all right, we're going to give Peyton Barber a shot. And he actually took the job and ran with it. So I'm not so certain that Ronald Jones is just going to come in here and supplant Peyton Barber. I think that Peyton Barber has an opportunity to take some touches away from Ronald Jones. And then you're looking at another guy in Charles Sims. Yeah, they brought this guy back. He was a free agent. They re-signed him because they really liked his pass protection and they liked his ability to catch out of the backfield. So he's going to take that third down work automatically Ronald Jones never was a pass catcher out of USC. They only used him between the tackles as a zone runner, like you said. However, the holes that he was running behind in USC were wider than... All right, we won't, we won't even go to that joke, okay? We won't go there. But what I'm saying is I don't think he's going to get those kind of holes when you're talking about this Tampa Bay offensive line. So I'm not so sold that Ronald Jones is instantly going to come in and all of a sudden be you know, the best running back in that backfield. Unlike Royce Freeman, who is a man child, a guy who is six feet tall, over 230 pounds, essentially what we like to call in the showbiz a tank. He's coming in. He's got the fifth easiest schedule when it comes to running backs. You're talking about talent and a dearth of talent. You're, Booker, you're telling me that that guy scares you off? If that guy scares you, 
then man, I, I don't know what, what, what else to, to say, but we've seen what Booker can do and it's not very impressive. Then you want to look at what CJ Anderson did last season. And yeah, it wasn't anything spectacular, but he was the running back 17. And I definitely think that that kind of production can be repeated by Royce Freeman. And you're talking about Case Keenum. Okay, I'll give it to you. Maybe he's not what we thought he was last year. Maybe he's not even near that. However, teams are going to respect it, whether you believe it or not. They're going to respect Case Keenum because I feel like he's earned some respect. So they're going to at least not load the box. He's got wide receivers on the outside that you're going to have to cover. So you can't really necessarily load the box because Case Keenum can dink and dunk if need be. And you're also talking about a guy who, yeah, his pass catching isn't quite there to the ability that you would like, but he he can. He at least showed the ability to do so. You're talking about a guy who ran over 1,300 yards in all four seasons at the University of Oregon. Come on, man. Royce Freeman all day. I like his draft stock currently. And when it comes to deciding between Royce Freeman and Ronald Jones, I actually like Royce Freeman a lot more, and it's not even close for me. Yeah, well, I mean, you mentioned the the lack of pass catching. He's also struggled in pass protection. And you talk about how he's been a starter. He's got a lot of attempts on his legs, Johnny. 700 attempts in college. That's insane. And then you want to talk about Denver, where he's playing against, you know, behind Pro Football Focus's 23rd ranked offensive line last year. So, I mean, I, mean, I don't it's, think it's going to be better than last year. And CJ Anderson did something. So, I, yeah, I, I mean, I, the offensive line doesn't really scare me a whole lot. I mean, you're it, talking about they're going against the fifth easiest running back schedule. For in all the league, so it's yeah. Is it is it the best? I just no, but I think that the situations are a little bit more similar. And if you look at Ronald Jones last year, he was Pro Football Focus's highest graded overall back. So they had him high in in the entire nation. So Ronald Jones, uh, it's for me the skill is there. I think that we say this all the time that talent will rise to the top. And for me, give me Ronald Jones. I think he's the I think he's the more skilled running back. All right. Let us know what you guys think in the notes below. Are you guys going Royce Freeman or are you guys going Ronald Jones in your drafts? Let us know and tune into our face off Fridays coming at you every Friday where we debate two guys going in similar ADPs and we're telling you which one you should draft. Let us know what you think. Travis, you got anything else for the people? That's it. Hope everybody enjoys their weekend. Have a good one. I'm Johnny Game Time Hicks. That's Big Travi, and we're out. Peace. Peace. Thank you for listening to the Fantasy Whisperers podcast. You can hear more from John and Travis on Google Play, SoundCloud, and iTunes. You can also follow us on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter at TF Whisperers.